From the beginning of film until about 1950 was extremely flammable. And it creates its own oxygen when it burns, which means you can't put it out. It can burn underwater. So if you have a film fire in your projection room, you don't try to put it out. You just get out, close the door, and hope that your room contains the fire. Now originally there was a wall from here to here in this little bar on the floor was a little doorway coming in. Probably lined with tin on the inside too. So, um, hi, come on in. Here, you step over here so everybody can get in. Okay, step in, step in, step in, step in. Is that it? That's it. Okay, yeah. And so, um, now they took other precautions too, like you see these rails around the port. Every port had them at the time. There was a sliding door over the port that was set up to automatically shut if there was a fire so the flames wouldn't spread to the theater. Now, luckily, to our knowledge, there was not a fire here in the ten year, the first ten years this booth was used, between 1913 and 1923. Um, they built a couple of air vents up to the roof here to vent some of the heat, but you can imagine how hot it got in here, an enclosed booth with, if you were using a carbon arc lamp and silver nitrate film, very, very dangerous. But, hey, it was a living. <laughs> now, um, everybody see what this says on the wall here? Can you read that? Somebody read that. Spit in box. Now, can anybody guess why that was written there a hundred years ago? Tobacco. Good. Whoever said tobacco? Oh. Very good. <laughs> well, you see, because the film was so flammable, the projectionist couldn't smoke in here. And so if he wanted his tobacco fix, he'd have to use chewing tobacco, and that was to remind him not to spit on the floor, thank you very much. So it's been there a long time. Anything you see written on the walls here... It's been here probably since the early 20s at the latest, like this Gabriel and Company printing sticker. Um, you can tell that's been there a while because the phone number is four digits. <laughs> so, uh, but we're printing uh, set up here. Now, everything you see in here, we brought in. This was basically empty when uh, it was opened up. We have our sound system over here, which you hear you know, the music between the films. We have our 35 millimeter projectors. We have our 16 millimeter projectors. Our pageants here, they're the re our real workhorses. They just generally get used every week. Um, we have a slide projector. Out in the front, we have a DVD projector, which is wired to a player in here. So we can project DVDs on the screen as well as film. In fact, you can rent this theater if you want. Bring your own DVDs and have a party like it's your living room. <laughs> like uh, some months ago, a group of women. Um, come on in. There's some, there's some room for you. Right yeah. there. A group of women rented us for a day and um, had a breakfast at Tiffany's party where they all dressed up like Audrey Hepburn and then they looked at the movie and had a great time. So, uh, this is our baby here, though. Uh, this is, um, we figured there was one just like this here. Come on in, come on in. Come in, come in a little further. Got in a little late here. Um, uh, this is a 1915 Powers 35 millimeter projector, hand crank. Go ahead and give it a crank. There you go. That's how you move the film through. Sit there and crank it out. Holds about a half hour's worth of film. So uh, if it was a long film, the projectionist would crank out the first half hour. Then while he's changing reels, uh, he would take some lantern slides. We have a few on a light table downstairs for you to see. Put one in here move it back into the gate, and this whole light housing here would slide over, and they'd be projected through this lens here. And we figure there was a projector at least very similar to this here, because in the corner here, there are two ports set up perfectly for it. One big port for the film, and to the left of it, they chopped one small port in the wall for the slides. And once in a while, our projectionist David will move this one into that position and crank out a film for the audience. Uh, just so you can see what it's like to have a film projected exactly the way it was a hundred years ago. And we know that Charlie Chaplin, while he was uh, making movies here in Niles, watched movies in this theater. As, uh, as did a lot of the other SNA personnel, because they would come over to watch movies from the other studios to see what the competition was doing. So they, were very, they wanted to stay ahead of the curve. So, um, any questions? Is that hard work to Um... Not really. It's it, it, you can keep a pretty uh, pretty uh, constant speed. Uh, wouldn't want to arm wrestle the guy who's been doing it for a while. 
The story I get was that back in the old Nickelodeon days, they and the projecting projectionists were instructed to crank a little faster so they got extra shows in. So, uh, but it was, hey, you know, like I said, it was a living doing that again, running silver nitrate film, maybe with a carbon arc lamp, extremely hot. I mean, a flame, you know. Oh, but hey, you know, what happens, happens. So, um, well, that's our little projection booth tour. And if you come during uh, the hours of noon and 4 p.m. on Saturday and Sunday, you can take a full tour of our museum here. Full guided tour. But we 